the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight is a program of adventure with Howard Duff as your host. Here's a preview. Lori, I don't want to just go there. I want to get her out. Well, that's dangerous. It could be, so I want to do this by myself. I don't want you with me. I only said it was dangerous. I didn't say I wasn't going. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Howard Duff. We're in London, England. A few hours ago, Laurie and Peter Ratner got off a 747 ready to start their honeymoon. They rushed out to buy a van, and that's where they are now. They decided in Chicago the perfect way to see Europe was to drive through it. Listen, my friend. Before I buy anything, I want it checked out by a mechanic. Yes, of course, sir, but I assure you this particular van is in perfect running order. They all say that. How much are you asking? 1,360 pounds. How much is that in American money? Oh, uh, $3,000, more or less. Oh, Peter, that's more than we wanted to spend. If it's in good shape, it's worth it. I don't want a van that's going to break down in the middle of nowhere. There is an important reason why Peter is so concerned about having the van in such perfect shape. It's extremely critical for his plan. A plan that Laurie knows nothing about. Peter has not been very truthful with his new bride. When he tells her there's not going to be a honeymoon, it may be the start of the end of their marriage. And that's only the beginning of our story. Adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of the Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Visit, by Joyce and Stanley Director. Our stars, Stephen Markle, Pamela Blake, and Naomi Stevens. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. first night in London was exactly how Laurie wanted it. Dinner and the theater. Peter didn't want to spoil it. He thought it best to wait until morning before he told her. Peter, wake up. There are things to do, places to go, people to see. I went out and got you some hot coffee. Doesn't it smell good? Mmm. Mmm. Thank you. What time is it? It's early, but the early bird catches a worm. Mmm. Oh, I'm still tired. It must be the jet lag. Well, we did get in pretty late last night. How come you're so up? Because there's a million things I want to do. I'll catch up on my sleep when we get back to Chicago. Okay, what would you like to do first? First, I want to wake up. Then, my love, I have to talk to you. We can talk while we're doing things. We'll have breakfast. You hungry? I'm starved. Then, would you like to visit the Queen? What? Sure, the palace has tours, don't they? I don't know. Well, they must. We have tours of the White House. I don't see why they wouldn't have a tour of Buckingham Palace. Well, even if they do, you're not going to see the Queen. You never know. She lives there, doesn't she? Please, sit down for a minute. There's something very important that I have to tell you. You sound serious. I am. Have you ever felt a pulling inside you, a feeling that you had to do something, no matter what? What is it you have to do? It has to do with my family. Your family? Well, didn't your father die a few years ago? Yes. You're an only child, right? It's my mother. I never knew her. My father brought me up, but he used to tell me stories about my mother, and through these stories, I grew close to her. They rode each other every month for 25 years. I wondered why you never talked about her. Why weren't they together? Well, let me go back to the beginning. My parents were from Zandburg. That's a small town in East Germany. When I was a baby, they wanted to get out. Well, you know, that's not easy. They're not that happy about people leaving. Anyway, somehow word got out, and the night of the escape, the police were waiting. My mother saw them first. She handed me to my father, and then she ran toward them, shouting and screaming. She took off in the opposite direction with the police following, and my father had enough time to get away. She sounds like some woman. She is. I didn't know you were born in Germany. Neither did I, until my father told me. He had a false birth certificate made for me. If you have enough money, there's a lot of things you can buy. Where's your mother now? Still in Zandburg. My father tried his damnedest to get her out. He wrote letters to everyone he could think of. A newspaper even got involved for a while. No luck. They said she was a dangerous criminal. 
After she was caught the night of the escape, they sent her to a labor camp, and she was labeled as a criminal. Oh, how sad. See, when you started talking about going to Europe for a honeymoon, something clicked inside my head. All I could think of was my mother. The fact that she could be so near. Is that it? You want to see her? Of course we can go there. Lori, I don't want to just go there. I want to get her out. Well, that's dangerous. It could be, so I want to do this by myself. I don't want you with me. I only said it was dangerous. I didn't say I wasn't going. What are you saying? You want to go? That's right. Do you think I'm going to let you go off by yourself on our honeymoon? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ratner? Yes? And Mr. Austin will see you now. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ratner, sit down, please. Well, I've just been looking over your application. You tell me, why have you chosen such a small town as Zantburg? Well, oh, we wanted to see how the... Uh... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You, you go first. We, uh... We wanted to get the feel of the real country. Things you don't experience in a big city. Yes, I see you have a van. You'll be driving there, I gather. Yes, sir. Well, you'll not be allowed to sleep in your van. You'll have to stay at the Zandburg Hotel. Is that all right? Yes. Good, then I'll make a reservation for you. Thank you. Oh, uh, you should know also that they will require and keep your passports until you're ready to depart. They also have a curfew at night, so I suggest you stay off the streets. <laughs> There are many laws, some ludicrous, but they will land you in jail. And knowing this, you still want to go? Yes. You seem like a nice young couple, recently married, I see. I would hate to see you get into trouble. And I hope you know if anything should happen to you while you are in East Germany, there is not much we can do for you. Oh, we know that, Mr. Austin. We will be the perfect tourists if there is such a thing. Well, my experience has shown that quite a few people who choose to go to small towns do so because they have relatives or loved ones there. Well, I'm not saying you do, but there have been many such cases. And would you believe they try to get those relatives out of the country? Really? That's terrible. Yes. And, and what's worse is if they get caught, I, I cannot help them. My hands are tied because what they did is illegal. Do many of them get caught? Oh, quite a few. They try many ways. Some have tried putting people in coffins, wrapping them in packages, or uh, hiding them in vans. Well, what happens to these people? Well, it varies with each case, but the punishment is always severe. But you're not going to smuggle anybody out of Zantburg, so you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know, you remind me of another young couple who went to a town not far from Zantburg. The only difference is they were planning on smuggling someone out. Fortunately, they were successful. It seemed, if memory serves me correctly, they took the Meyerhoff Road till it became a dead end, and then they went to the right over some fields for about a mile, and there was a tunnel, which had been dug many years ago. Apparently, no one knows about that tunnel or remembers it, because it seems that it leads right to the west, bypassing the border guards. Well... That's a very interesting story. Yes. Yes, yes I, I thought you'd enjoy it. After having received their visas, Laurie and Peter took off on the long journey to Zantburg. They have been driving for days, stopping only for necessities. We should be reaching the border soon. Are you nervous? Yes, a little. Don't look like that. It's not that bad. We all get nervous once in a while. I'll be all right once we get there. Are you sure? I'm positive. You know, I think I must have relatives living in Russia. I didn't know that's where your people were from. On my mother's side. Her grandparents came from someplace in Russia. I don't know where exactly. Well, how about your father's side? Who knows? Very hush-hush. You didn't ask questions about them. Did you ever wonder what you would be like if you weren't raised in America? Sometimes. You'd probably be fat and stocky and look 20 years older than you are. Thanks a lot. <laughs> but I'd still love you. That's because I'd probably look as bad as you. Yeah, here we go. The board is coming up. Better get out our passports. Hello. A passport? Yes, sir. Here you go. Raus. I'm 
pardon. Uh, the two of you, out. Open the back of your van. Yes, sir. Open all the luggage. What is your destination? Zandburg. You have reservations? Yes, at the Zandburg uh, Hotel. Here's the confirmation. Mm -hmm. Close the luggage. Now your purse. My purse? Oh, of course, sir. Here. Your passport. You may go. Enjoy your visit. famous Zandberg Hotel. Hotel? It looks more like a rooming house. Anybody here? Hello? Ah, Mr. and Mrs. Ratner? Yes. Welcome. May I have your passport? Thank you. Now, uh, how long will you be staying with us? Uh, we really don't know. It depends. Well, here's your key. Room 211. Uh, that's uh, upstairs and to the left. Hello, Franz. Ah, Herr Hessler. We are just in time to greet our guest, Mr. and Mrs. Ratner. This is Herr Hessler, our chief constable. Hello. Hello. Oh, such a lovely young couple. Uh, did you just arrive? Yes. Good. Then I will show you around our little town. Uh, Franz, take their luggage upstairs. You're not too tired, are you? Uh, it won't take long. Come. This is really an honor having the chief constable show us around. It's my pleasure. So you're from the United States, huh? Yes, Chicago. You must forgive me. I'm not that familiar with your country. I do not know anything about Chicago. Uh, that's all right. We're not familiar with your country either. When you leave, you will know a little more about us. Uh, tell me, why have you chosen to come to our little hamlet? Well, we uh, bought a van so we could travel through all of Europe, visiting a lot of small towns. Hmm. We didn't want to be the typical tourists who only meet other tourists. We wanted to get to see the people who live in the various countries. Uh, here's our bakery. The best bakery in all of Germany. Smell that? Mm, Studer. So hard to resist. If you're like me, you may put on some weight while you're here. <laughs> How about restaurants? Is there a good place for us to eat? Oh, for a small town, we have several excellent restaurants. I, I will show you. Uh, one is around this corner. Uh, have I made you hungry? Yes, you have. I will let you go eat. But first, I must congratulate you on your marriage. Why, thank you. But how did you know? You think we would not know? <laughs> we are very careful about whom we let in our country. Uh, your name. I keep thinking of your name. It has a ring to it. Uh, Ratner, Ratner. Are you people from Germany? It could be a German name. No, I, I don't think so. As far as I know, my grandparents were from Poland. Well, uh, a lot of Germans in Poland. What are the police doing? They have broken the law. They're being arrested. We do not allow three or more people to congregate on the streets. You have nothing to say about that? I thought Americans were more uh, verbal. It's your country. What can we say? We can't tell you how to run your country. You are smart. If you will excuse me, I have work to do. If you have any questions, feel free to call on me. It was very nice meeting you. I hope we see you again. I'm sure you will. This is a small town. Thank you for showing us around. Auf Wiedersehen. Let's walk in this direction. He was something else. Did you see his eyes? His mouth was smiling, but his eyes weren't. They were so cold, it was eerie. I don't like that man. Peter head for the restaurant where Fanny Raskin, Peter's mother, works. It's so hard for me to believe I'm finally going to see my mother. We're lucky she works in a restaurant. It helps. It's an excuse for us to see her. We've got to eat. Why do you think I mentioned to Mr. Hessler that I was hungry? Huh. Hello. Bitte setzen Sie sich. Do you speak English? We're Americans. 
No speak German. Ah, Amerikaner. Warten Sie eine Sekunde. Es wird Ihnen gleich jemand helfen. Do you know what she says? I, I got a couple of words. I think she's going to get somebody to help us. Let's sit down meanwhile. Do you see her? No. Give me your wallet. I want to look at her picture again. Well, don't let anybody see. I won't. Remember, it's an old picture. She's probably changed. Does she know what you look like? Well, she's only seen pictures of me as a child. Oh, we don't want to scare her. You have to be careful when you tell her who you are. That woman. Look, she just came out of the kitchen. She's coming towards us. I think it's my mother. Hello. Lottie tells me you are Americans. I speak English. If you tell me what you like to eat, I will translate for you. You speak very well. Where did you learn? I taught myself many years ago two books that I don't get a chance to use. <laughs> What's your name? Fanny Ratkin. Hello, Fanny Ratskin. It's so nice to meet you. This is my wife, Lori, and my name is Peter. Hello, Peter. Oh, that is my favorite name. <laughs> Do you know what you would like to eat? Oh, how is the Wiener Schnitzel? Oh, it's very good. We'll have that and a couple of beers. Would you like to join us? Thank you, but I can't. I wanted to grab her and tell her who I was. Did you see how she reacted when I said my name was Peter? I should have told her then. She's coming back. Tell her now. Show her the picture. Excuse me. Fanny, could I speak to you for a moment? Yeah. Did you forget something? Yes. I wanted to ask you what you thought of this picture I have. My father gave it to me. It's my mother. My letter to my address. Uh -huh. Good. Come tomorrow morning early. Be careful. Don't let anybody see you. Oh, my God. Shh. This is her street. Look for the number 57. Are you sure you want me with you? I can go back to the hotel. I think you should be alone with us the first time. No. I want you with me. Please. We're here. Come in quickly. Come here. Put your arms around me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Tell me, what are you doing here? We came to get you out. To get me out? That's impossible. No, it's not. I'm going to do it. It's about time you're finally going to get out of here. Oh, Peter, Peter. Your father, God bless him, put this idea into your head. No. I know it was his dream, but I can make it come true. But your father is gone. Yes. But you're still here. I'm still here. Peter, it was his dream. It does not have to be yours. I don't understand you. You like it here? I'm used to it. It's comfortable. It's all I know. The few friends I have are here. It won't be too long before I join your father. No, no, I, I'm too old to go to a new land. Oh, you, you are a fine-looking man. You're strong. Oh, your father did a good job. But he should not have made this so important to you. You sound like you're not happy to see me. Oh, no. You will never know how happy I am to see you. But I worry for your safety. I, I know the danger you're in, the danger you put your wife in, the danger you, you put me in. It was very real. When we leave here, there will be no more danger. No, I can't bear the thought of something happening to you. No more talk. I, I will make her something to eat, and, and you will tell me all about yourself, the nice memories I can keep. And then you must go and not come back. You must leave here immediately. Not without you. Yes, without me. We came a long way. You can't expect us to accept your no just like that. Your son, my husband, has thought of nothing else but getting you out of here. I am not strong anymore. I cannot run. It is hard for me to walk. I'll carry you. You are very stubborn. So are you. No more talk about the future. Only now. 
about the past. My head can't take it. France, uh, where did the Americans go so early this morning? Well, I don't know, Herr Hessler. This is most unusual. On my way here, I saw them on Richter Street. They didn't see me. Uh, that is not an area they should be near. There's nothing of interest to tourists. Yeah, well, well perhaps they just took a walk, yeah? No, I watched them for some time. They weren't out for a walk. They were there for a purpose. It was the way they, they held themselves. They appeared to know where they were. I have a feeling they are up to something. Hmm. Richter Street is filled with houses where our comrades live. Maybe they went visiting, huh? Do you think there will be trouble? The trouble will be for them, not for me. We will watch where they go. I will send some men over later to search their room. You will give them the key. Jawohl, Herr Hessler. I'm exhausted. I think I'll take a nap. How can you sleep? I can't sleep. I didn't expect you to say no. I never even thought about it. I assumed she'd want to leave. You tried. If she doesn't want to go, you can't make her. Oh, maybe she's saying no because she doesn't want to be a burden. I don't know what to tell you. If you think that, bring it up to her. We can't stay here indefinitely. Oh, no. Peter, look. Everything in this bureau drawer is in a different place. They've searched our room. You're kidding. I don't kid about things like that. I know exactly where I put my things. What do we do now? Well, they couldn't have found anything. But this means they're suspicious of us. Without facts or evidence, they can't do anything. They don't know anything. All they're doing is guessing. If we keep talking like this, they may not have to guess. What if they bug this room? All right, let's search it. I'm getting scared. Maybe you're... You know, was right. Maybe we should leave. Not yet. I don't see anything. Keep looking. I think we're being followed I think you're right What do we do? Head back to the hotel Ah, Mr. and Mrs. Ratner How are you tonight? Fine And how are you, Mr. Hessler? Uh, problems, always problems My work never stops Tell me, are you enjoying yourselves? Very nice Come walk with me. I have to go to the jail on business. You may find it interesting. Come. Unfortunately, there's not much to do in our little town. How have you been keeping busy? Why, Mr. Hessler, you forget. We're on our honeymoon. Oh, yes. Young love. Have you had time to meet any of our people? Uh, you you said uh, your desire was to get to know some people. Well, we met a few, but it's hard to communicate. Not many people speak English, and we don't speak German. Here we are. I'm here, Schmidt. I need you to sign these papers, Herr Hessler. Oh, uh, are they in order? Of course. Good. Ask our guests if they would like something to drink. Oh, no, thank you. We're fine. I think we'll go back to the hotel. You have things to do, and we're a little tired. Uh, no, no, not yet. Wait. I will be with you in a little while. Uh, there are things we must discuss. How long are we supposed to wait? It's been about an hour. What's going on? We have to be careful not to offend him. Ah, there he is. Let me ask. Uh, Mr. Hessler, it's getting late. Maybe we could talk tomorrow. Hmm? Oh, oh, yes, yes, it is. It is getting late. Before you go, why don't you tell me why you are here? The real reason. Sir, we told you. I do not believe you. Who do you know? Why were you on Richter Street? We know no one here, and I can't remember the names to all your streets. I have patience. You will tell me. How can we tell you what we don't know? You may go. That's it? We may go. Come on, Laurie. Just a moment, Mr. and Mrs. Ratner. I, I see you are outside. So? A pity. You broke our curfew. You are under arrest. Schmidt, lock them up. Our Duffy again. And here's 
is the concluding act of The Visit. got you into this mess. You didn't get me into anything. I made my own decisions. We better not say too much. You never know who's listening. There's only one man here, and he's asleep. I can't believe this is happening. Me, Laurie Ratner, in jail in a foreign country. It's crazy. We'll get out. Will we? Dear God, I have nothing to just worship in the good morning. I'll do better, I promise. But right now, I need your help. We need your help. Laurie? Laurie? I can't understand what you're saying. I was praying. I don't know what else to do. Keep praying. He may hear you. Cal, wake up. Uh, uh, here, here, here. I, I'm, I'm up. Have you been taking good care of our guests? Oh, you're just like you told me. How long is this game going to go on? It's your move, my friend. You can leave here whenever you wish. All you have to do is tell me which one of our countrymen is a traitor. We don't know anybody here except you. You must like our jail. I just uh, came from your van. My men searched it. <laughs> that doesn't bother me. I have nothing to hide. They didn't find anything, did they? No, but I must say they did try hard. They did an excellent job. They took your whole vehicle apart. Ah. It's a pity they don't know how to put it back. What? You mean we have no more van? Of course you have a van, but it's in pieces. Mr. Ratner, your wife is so young, so pretty. Why do you put her through this, make her suffer? Do you not love her? I'm trying to be your friend. I do not wish to hurt you. Just tell me who you went to see on Richter Street, and then I will let you go. We didn't see anyone. We just took a walk. Enough. If you change your mind and wish to talk, I will listen. Until then, you will stay in jail. Cal, no food or water for our guests. Hello, Fanny. I've come for some of your delicious goulash. Hello, Schmidt. I've not seen you for a couple of days. Oh, I've been busy. Police business. We have some prisoners in jail and I've had to stay there all day. Ah, you work too hard. Uh, who is it in jail? Do I know them? No, nobody from here. They are Americans. Americans? That young American couple? You know them? Oh, they've been eating here. They, 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 they seem so nice. What did they do? Nothing. Hessler has one of his famous feelings. He saw them looking around on Richter Street, so he believes there's a big conspiracy going on. This is terrible. I, I talk to them. They're on the honeymoon. They're not criminals. Even if they're innocent, Hester will not let them go. It will be bad on his record. He'll make them look guilty. Oh, but I'm sure they have a family. People in America, if they don't go back, there will be inquiries. Let them inquire. We don't know anything. We'll tell them they never arrived here. Excuse me, Smith. I go get your goulash. Sorry. You hear that? Yes. What is it? It sounds like somebody's throwing pebbles at the window. Can you see who it is? It's Fanny. Peter, can you hear me? Yes. Who is in there with you? One man. Where is he? He's sleeping at the desk. Uh, is he facing the door? No. His back is to the door. Where are you going? Peter, tell me what's going on. I don't know yet. If he wakes up now and sees her sneaking toward him with that big pan, we're done for. You can do it. Forgive me, Lord. Mother, thank you. You're literally a lifesaver. Don't thank me yet. We still have to get out of here. Come, Lord. <laughs> I'm so glad you're coming with us. You did not give me much choice. 
I couldn't have stayed after what I just did. Why did you? I couldn't let anything happen to you. If not for me, you would never have come here. You won't be sorry things turned out this way. I know you love America as much as Papa did. Here, this way. We will walk in the field. The high grass will cover us. Oh, the light is coming up. We must be careful not to be seen. Stop it! Stop it! What is all this noise so early? Carl! Well, what are you doing here? The American. They are gone. They are escaped. But how? You were supposed to watch them. Someone hit me over the head. See? Here. You were sleeping again. Idiot! Get Schmidt immediately. We have to find them. Oh, I was right. They did know somebody. See? I was right, Schmidt. My feelings are always right. Yes, sir, Hessler. You were right, and I think I know who helped them escape. Yes? Tell me. You see this watch? Mm-hmm. Carl found it on the floor. It must have fallen off when he got hit. Huh. So, the woman's watch. It's Frau Ratskin. The old woman? I'm positive this is her watch. I've seen her wear it for so many years. And when I told her about the Americans being in jail, she was very concerned. Interesting. But why? Do you know anything else? I remember years ago the women used to talk about Frau Ratzkin's husband and son who were in America. Remember? Yes, I recall that now. You think that could be her son? Possible. Uh, Rat, no, Ratzkin. Close. Too close. You are very smart. Thank you, Herr Hessler. Let's rest here for a little bit. Where are we now? We are about 20 kilometers from the border. The border? What good is that? We can't cross it. How are we going to get out of here? Mother, where's Meyerhoff Road? That's right. I forgot all about that. What is this about Meyerhoff Road? It's only a little south of here. It doesn't go anywhere. Oh, yes, it does. We heard that it leads to the west. It's a dead end. Not for us. Just take a bear and we'll show you. What's that? A helicopter. Oh, no. Get down. Get down in the bush. Cover yourself. You think they saw us? You would know it if they did. Oh, go away. Dear God, please make them go away. They're leaving. Stay down until they're gone. Thanks again, God. Boy, I'm really getting to know him on this trip. <laughs> supposed to follow this road till it becomes a dead end. And then? Lori, do you remember if it was right or left? I think it was right. Mom, you look so tired. Uh, I'm all right. I wonder where Hessler is now. It's been about a mile. Where's the tunnel? You think that story was wrong? Oh, great. No. Maybe the tunnel was to the left. Yeah? And maybe there's no tunnel at all. <laughs> I'm so tired of everything. No, oh, Lori, my dear, <laughs> go ahead, cry. Sometimes that is the best medicine. Peter, huh? do you see that a little opening over there? Where? Here. Oh, look, it's been covered up. It's a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Fantastic. Let's get inside. We'll cover it back up from in here. That looks good enough. Uh, We don't want to cover it up so that nobody can see it. Remember, we almost missed it. You're right. That's perfect. Now, give me your hand. We'll hold each other's hands while we walk through here. Because it's very dark. Are you ready? Yes, me too. Let's go. Mr. Austin will see you now. Mr. and Mrs. Ratner, welcome back. I see you found Meyerhoff Road. Yes. And I would like to explain why we had to lie to you. Oh, there's no need, I understand. You couldn't tell me the truth. Well, your new passports are ready, and I spoke to your bank back in Chicago. They authorized me to give you this money along with your plane tickets back home. Mrs. Ratkin, 
You are a lucky woman to have such a lovely family. Yes, I am. Thank you, Mr. Austin, for everything you've done for us. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm glad you were among the lucky ones who escaped successfully. Now we wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for the help you gave us. Uh, we all need help at different times in our lives. The real tragedy is when people can help and do not. Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. The visit was written by Joyce and Stanley, director, produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Howard Duff. Our stars were Stephen Markle, Pamela Blake, and Naomi Stevens. Featured in the cast were Harold Dyronforth, Jack Manning, Ben Wright, Lillian Bias, Don Diamond, and Lou Krugman. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. Associate Director of Sears Radio Theater is Ken McManus. Sound effects were created by Bud Tollefson. Mark Trella is production supervisor. And the recording engineers are Joe Wachter and Hal McDonald. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Entertainment with great music and more. People like Laurie Allen and Jim Doyle on KMOX FM, St. Louis. KMOX FM. CBS News. The new government of Nicaragua has officially taken over in Managua with a warning against foreign intervention. This is John Bohannon reporting on the CBS Radio Network. Hundreds of thousands of people line the streets of Managua today to welcome two Marxist guerrillas, a writer and industrialist, and the widow of an opposition leader, the five members of the junta now ruling Nicaragua. They lost no time, declaring they will tolerate no outside interference in Nicaraguan affairs. America's new ambassador to Nicaragua says the U.S. should give the new regime a chance. More from Marvin Kalb. Ambassador Lawrence Pizzullo said the U.S. should not prejudge the new regime, but rather, in his words, give it a chance to put its house in order. At a news conference, the ambassador, who was recalled from Managua earlier this week, refused to project any political judgments into the future, refused also to say whether the Palestine Liberation Organization or Cuba played any major role in the ouster of the old Samosa regime. The ambassador, who will return to Managua but wouldn't say when, heaped a great deal of blame upon the interim president, Francisco Orcuyo, for any problems that did arise or may yet arise. In this sense, the U.S. has set up a handy scapegoat in the event Nicaragua goes leftist and follows a Castroite course in world affairs. Orcuyo refused for a little more than a day earlier this week to hand over power to the Sandinista rebels. And this action, according to Ambassador Pizzullo, victimized the National Guard, undercut the entire diplomatic and political position. Ultimately, though, Orcuyo fled the country and the rebels are now in power. Marvin Kalb, CBS News, the State Department. Former President Somoza of Nicaragua is aboard a yacht in the Bahamas on what's called a vacation. He sailed out of Miami Beach last night after saying the United States had forced him out of Florida by trying to pressure him to influence acting President Arcuyu. The FBI is investigating a kidnapping in West Milford, New Jersey. Officials say someone kidnapped a bank executive's wife earlier today. He reportedly paid a $100,000 ransom, but authorities say the woman has not been released yet. Officials say at least 26 crewmen are still missing after last night's collision of two supertankers in the Caribbean off Tobago. And the oil spill is now said to be the worst ever, more than one and a half million barrels. South Korea's foreign minister is praising President Carter for his decision to order a halt in most U.S. troop cutbacks, at least until 1981. President's national security advisor, Zbigniew Brzezinski, said the reason for the freeze is because North Korea is building up its forces beyond previous U.S. estimates, and he says the government of Seoul is putting more muscle into its own military. The Republic of Korea recognizes the need to augment its self-defense efforts. And President Park has stated that his government would expand defense spending significantly beyond previously planned levels and accord special urgency to improving its ground forces. America has about 30,500 U.S. Army ground troops in South Korea. 
The latest changes in the Carter administration came earlier today. Later, Mr. Carter made a nationwide broadcast to say that would be the end of his cabinet reorganization. The latest to leave are Energy Secretary James Schlesinger and Transportation Secretary Brock Adams. Jim Springer of Dayton, Ohio, built a 100-pound wooden coffin last Halloween. He doesn't need it anymore, but he can't get rid of it. He put it out on the...